Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 13, and I'm starting a new series here on EDH cards. Since EDH was really what got me back into Magic, this is a top 10 series. I know some people have done other top series out there for what their favorite cards are. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more focused in that it's EDH specific, and I've got a set of criteria for determining uh, what the best cards that I'll be focusing on are. Let's jump right into that criteria and look at where we're going. Number one, EDH is a casual market, so it's very important to me that the cards I'm going to be highlighting are under the $20 mark. It's nice to point out that Mana Drain is an incredible card, but most EDH players are not going to be spending $150 or $200 on a single card. I may do a high price top 10 later, but the focus here is on cards that anybody can pick up for a few dollars and add directly into their decks. The second piece of criteria here is that the cards are interactive in some way, that they put forward a kind of piece of that color's flavor and style and put it out there in a way that it adds to or combines with several other cards in the deck. Now when I say interactive, I mean that it actually does things that allow your opponent to interact, interact with their cards also, that it's not a solitaire game. And that's really where my third piece of advice comes in here, and the third thing that I really, really believe in in EDH is that we're not going for blatant combos here. If you want to combo out, that's extremely easy. In EDH, you can combo out in the first few turns very quickly, but most decks will not have anything to stop you from doing that. If you want to play combos, go to Legacy, where it's filled with uh, Force of Wills and other anti-combo cards, and other people have a chance to stop you. But EDH is about playing an interactive game with people, so none of the cards that you see on these lists are going to be blatant solo combo pieces in and of themselves. A few of them might be useful in getting you combo pieces or doing other things, but the focus here is on cards that really play well with others and interact well to create a dynamic, interesting political game, which is what multiplayer really can be. So let's jump in with some of the top cards and an honorable mention here to Ramp in green. Green ramps better than anybody else out there. Uh, we can do an entire episode on ramp cards. 99% uh, of these ramp cards are extremely inexpensive. I'm going to highlight just one of them here and we'll do an entire episode later on green ramp on mana acceleration specifically. The one that I think is often overlooked is Sky Shroud Claim. It is a lot like Explosive Vegetation, which was in one of the Commander-specific decks, um, but it has a big difference in that the two forests that you get come into play untapped, so it actually accelerates your ramp. Uh, you can easily cast this with one other piece of acceleration on third turn, cast two pieces of acceleration on this turn, and be into some incredibly large green or green and other spells really quickly. I recommend checking it out. It's only a few cents off and found in common bins for a nickel. Let's move on here with number 10. Sylvan Library has got to be one of the best EDH cards out there. It's extremely splashable at one green, one colorless. It gives green something that it's often missing, which is card draw. It gives you wonderful card selection, especially if you can find a way to reshuffle as part of it. I'm super happy to see this card reprinted in the upcoming Arsenal set, and one of the things that makes me really excited is that Wizards may be doing something really cool with the Arsenal set coming out this year. I love this card. I also have a warm spot. And I, for it in my heart because I do also play it in Maverick as a nice way to get some card advantage. The 4 life really matters in Legacy, but in EDH the 4 life is not a big deal at all to grab an extra card. Number 9 has to be one of the most versatile cards that's out there at 5 casting cost. A 6 line is a 2-2 two -two with Death Touch, which is a wonderful blocker in EDH, but the ability to destroy an artifact, enchantment, or land really gives you a lot of versatility in green. I love cards with this type of play. It comes into play effect. In standard, it's occasionally too late to play at five casting costs, but in EDH, it really hits a nice sweet spot there as you're ramping into some of your larger spells. 
It lets you deal with some of your opponent's early turn threats or slow them down a little bit. I'm not generally a fan of land destruction in EDH, but you do need a little bit of targeted lands removal as, as there are some extremely strong land cards out there in things like Maze of Ith or Strip Mine or Sack Outlets when playing against a Child of Alara deck. Number eight here is one that's often overlooked. It's Praetor's Council. Green is really short on card draw, and this really fixes that. Uh, often a board wipe will remove green from the game entirely, and Praetor's Council has won me more than one game by reclaiming all of those cards in my graveyard and getting me back in the game. Mosswort Bridge is really a nod to the whole Hideaway series, although this has got to be the best of the Hideaway cards out there. Hideaway lets you look at the top four cards of your deck, take one of those, put those under the land, and then when the condition is met on the card, you can play that card from under the land. This is a very inexpensive card, it's wonderfully playable, it's very easy for you to get total power of 10 or greater, that's often only 2 or 3 creatures in green, and it gives you the ability to play the spell um, in there at instant speed, which can often be crushing in and of itself. Next, car next spot that I'm looking at here, I... I'm putting in two different cards here. One, because it's extremely popular in my playgroup, which is Avenger of Zendikar. It's even made it up there into the top 25s, but the card that I really like in this kind of spot here better is Kamal. Um, both of these cards can act as potential win conditions for green. Uh, I've won several games with both of these cards, being able to drop them and then attack either that turn or the next turn can definitely get you out of a situation in which the deck, the board state has stalled and people are just waiting for a way to end the game. Kamal has an added benefit though, and I think it's highly underrated at this point because people don't notice that first ability, which is one green, target land becomes a 1-1 one, one creature until end of turn, it's still a land. This can prevent board wipes. Uh, your opponent is not likely to destroy all your green creatures if you have the ability to turn all of their lands into creatures in response. So it gives you some defense in keeping a really strong board state. I love Kamal, I also really like Avenger of Zendikar. I recommend when building a green deck or putting green into an EDH deck, have one of these type of ender cards in it so that you can get over those difficult situations where the board is really locked up. Number five here is just a wonderful utility card, Eternal Witness. Uh, probably the most played green card out there as the utility of comes into play and return any card from your graveyard is extremely strong. It's also nice to have a 2-1 body as a good blocker or a little bit of beatdown. The equivalent that this card is based off of regrowth for one less green is played a lot less because you don't have that body. I also think it really just fits the theme of green better to be a creature. In the number four spot, I've got uh, another form of removal here, but both these forms of removal also come with really nice size large bodies to them. They really fit the green theme. Uh, I personally like Woodfall Primus better than Trastodon. Many of my friends in playgroups disagree strongly that Trastodon is the better card because you can often get a 3 for 1 and blocking 3-3 three, three elephants is no big deal. I tend to have problems with board wipes when playing green and the persist really really helps me out there. In the number 3-3 three, three spot I've got Genesis Wave and Green Sun Zenith because they both have very similar abilities and I should also give a nod to Calling Car Cord out there. Now, uh, Genesis Wave is really a game ender, but Green Sun I think is the better of these cards by a long ways because Green Sun is always good. In first, second, third, fourth turn you can ramp with it. Fifth, sixth, seventh you can go get some amazing creatures, and late game it gets you the individual creature that you need to really break things up or end the game. Uh, Green Sun is by far one of the best cards. I'm going to have to drop an image in here for Calling Cord, which is very similar to Green Sun, a little bit slower, but instant speed and has a lot of diversity to it. 
Now I said that I wasn't going to add ramp in this because I'm going to be doing a separate video on ramp, but I, I have to put Primeval Titan in here. This is by far one of the best EDH cards for any color, anywhere. Uh, Primeval Titan is not only the best 6 casting cost ramp spell out there, but it also has a 6-6 six, six body, which is incredibly good, and trample. And this card does a lot. It's often whoever uh, casts this and can attack with it in my playgroup uh, that is able to swing the game in their favor. Um, I've seen this right of replication a few times to swing the favor back to a blue player, but this is just a wonderful card that I'd strongly recommend picking up and including in any green deck. The price on it has dropped significantly with it about to rotate out of standard. It may even go down a few more dollars before it starts to rise back up. I can see this easily becoming a 20 plus dollar card over time as it really catches on and increases with the EDH market as it rotates out of standard. This is the type of board presence you really want in an EDH game is to help you continue to cast those cool overpowered spells that you've got. Take a second here and see if you can guess what I've got in the number one spot. Maybe something a little bit overpowered. Okay, it's something a lot overpowered and one of the more expensive ones on this list. Uh, Survival of the Fittest has always had a warm place in my heart since playing it in both Standard and in uh, Legacy before it was banned in Legacy. It is a tutor card, and I don't like getting too many tutor cards into EDH, or it kind of takes out the random feel to it. But if I'm going to add a tutor card, it's one that really combos really well with other green creatures. When you can play it with something like Brawn, who gives Trample if it's sitting in your graveyard, or Genesis, which lets you bring back creatures from your graveyard, it works extremely well. This card and an honorable mention here to Fauna Shaman, which is the same thing at a 2-2 body. Um, one of these two is a must in green decks that are heavy creature based because it really gives you a lot more flexibility in what you can do. I love this card. It does happen to be a little bit uh, overpowered, but it's a wonderful card to play in EDH. I recommend giving it a try. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with my top 10 green cards for EDH. I should have a deck tech coming in here soon to go over a green deck that I put together that does run all of these cards and 90 others. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe. If you've got any suggestions for things that I have left off of this top 10 green list, please let me know. I'm always looking for ways that I can improve my green EDH, mono green EDH deck or just EDH decks in general. Thanks.